I think one of the biggest reasons we struggle to let go of clutter is because of emotional attachment. We attach memories, emotions, and experiences to certain objects, and it's hard to separate those feelings from the physical item itself. For example, maybe you have a piece of jewelry that was given to you by a loved one, or a book that was signed by your favorite author. These objects hold emotional value, and it's hard to imagine parting with them. Another reason we hold on to clutter is because of societal pressures. We live in a culture that values consumption and materialism, and we're constantly being told that we need the latest and greatest things. This can lead to a sense of FOMO or fear of missing out, and we end up accumulating more and more stuff. All right, let me give you a second or two to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Okay, thanks, let's continue. There's the fear of regret. What if I get rid of something and I need it later? What if I regret letting it go? This fear can be paralyzing, and it can make it impossible to make decisions about what to keep and what to let go of. We also hold on to clutter because of a sense of obligation. Maybe someone gave us a gift and we feel obligated to keep it, even if we don't really want it. Or maybe we feel like we need to hold on to something because it's worth a lot of money. This sense of obligation can be overwhelming and it can make it hard to let go of clutter. Sometimes we hold on to clutter because we're simply overwhelmed by the thought of sorting through it all. It's a daunting task and it can feel like it's just too much to handle. So we put it off and it becomes a source of stress and anxiety. Also, there's the fear of loss of identity. We often tie our sense of self to our possessions, and getting rid of them can feel like we're losing a part of ourselves. This fear can be deep-seated, and it can make it really hard to let go of clutter. Have you ever walked into someone's home and been struck by the sheer amount of stuff they have? Maybe you've even felt a sense of discomfort or anxiety because of it. That's because clutter can be overwhelming, not just for the person living in the space, but for visitors, too. I think one of the most interesting things about clutter is the way it can reveal underlying psychological issues. For example, someone who struggles with hoarding tendencies may be holding on to items because they're afraid of not being able to replace them. Or maybe they're holding on to memories or emotions that are tied to the object. Nostalgia is another psychological aspect of clutter. We hold on to things because they remind us of happy times or special memories. And while it's nice to look back on those memories, Holding on to physical objects can actually prevent us from moving forward. The fear of letting go is another psychological aspect of clutter. We're afraid of what will happen if we get rid of something, or who will be without it. This fear can be paralyzing, and it can make it impossible to make decisions about what to keep and what to let go of. I've seen this firsthand in my own life. I used to hold on to old love letters and photos from past relationships because I was afraid of letting go of the memories. But the truth is, those memories are still with me, even if the physical objects aren't. Sometimes we hold on to clutter because we're afraid of change. We're comfortable with the way things are, and we don't want to rock the boat. But the truth is, change is inevitable, and getting rid of clutter can actually help us prepare for it. Another psychological aspect of clutter is the concept of sunk cost. This is the idea that we've invested so much time, money, or energy into something that we feel like we need to hold on to it, even if it's no longer serving us. This can be a tough one to overcome, but it's so important to remember that just because we've invested in something doesn't mean it's worth holding on to. So, how do we overcome these clutter challenges? For me, the key insight is the importance of mindfulness. When we're mindful, we're present in the moment and we're able to make decisions based on what's truly important to us. We're not bogged down by emotions or societal pressures. One strategy that can help with this is setting realistic goals. Instead of trying to tackle an entire room or house in one day, break it down into smaller tasks. Start with one area, like your desk or a single shelf, and focus on that. This will help you build momentum and confidence, and it will make the task feel less overwhelming. Another strategy is to ask yourself questions about each item, does it bring me joy? Do I need it? Would I miss it if it were gone? These questions can help you separate the emotional attachment from the physical object and make decisions based on what's truly important. So, to summarize, clutter is more than just physical stuff. It's emotional, too. We hold on to things because of emotional attachment, societal pressures, and fear of regret. But decluttering is a process that requires patience and self-compassion. We need to be kind to ourselves as we sort through our belongings 
and we need to be willing to let go of things that no longer serve us. Remember, decluttering isn't about getting rid of everything. It's about creating space for what truly matters. It's about creating a sense of calm and clarity in our lives, and it's about living more intentionally. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What's your biggest clutter challenge, and how do you overcome it? Share your stories and tips with me, and let's support each other on this journey to a more organized, clutter-free life. And if you want more tips on organizing or mental wellness, be sure to check out my other videos on these topics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.